And we're opening happiness with the news now. And President Mahama has described as unfortunate xenophobic attacks on black migrants in South Africa. He described the situation as most regrettable and very much unfortunate. He expressed, he expressed the belief that the young people of South Africa did not know what happened before they gained their freedom. It's most regrettable and most unfortunate. I think that the young people of South Africa do not know what happened before they gained their freedom. The whole of this continent stood behind South Africa. The whole of Africa stood behind South Africa. And so it is regrettable that the same people who fought against apartheid, you know, are being attacked in this way. The pictures we've seen are very horrible. As ECOWAS, we've issued a statement condemning um, uh, what is happening. The unfortunate thing is this is not the first time. It keeps flaring up. And so while we are condemning this incident, we must work with the South African government to ensure that this doesn't happen again. We're trying to create an integrated continent where our people can move freely amongst our countries. This does not set a very good example for integration, and especially for South Africa that has investments all across our countries. I think that the government must sit up and must take strong action. Those who have been involved in these atrocities must be brought to book and must be punished so that it serves as a deterrent and it doesn't happen in future. All right, President John Dramani Mahama there and General Buhari looking on. Uh, we have to move on though. The Attorney General Marietta Brew upon uh, Brew upon has meanwhile stated uh, that it has dropped. And I have to go back because we're bringing you that uh, KKD story in an Accra High Court. On Wednesday, discharged entertainment personality Kwesi Che Dakwa of the rape charge brought against him. This was after the state said it was no longer interested in pursuing the matter. The state had indicated it would go ahead to try KKD, even though the said victim had stated her unwillingness to cooperate and a seven-member jury was to be constituted to hear the case on Wednesday. Ani Osabute has the rest of the story. Mm. And as Ani also continues, uh, the Attorney General, Marita Bruhamund, uh, has already stated that uh, they dropped the rape charges against KKD mainly because the alleged victim was unwilling to testify. <coughs> The airport police arrested KKD on December 27, 2014, after a 19-year-old lady, Miss Irefe Olens Thompson, accused him of raping her in a hotel washroom. State prosecutors had vowed to prosecute KKD even though the alleged victim, 19-year-old Irefe Olens Thompson, had written to them declaring her disinterest in the case. They, however, beat a retreat when the case was called on Wednesday. Explain in the reasons why the state dropped the case, the state in a communique said the decision was taken because, quote, the victim in this case, Irefe, is still very unwilling to testify in court. The victim states that she is highly traumatized by the events of the day of the incident and its aftermath and so is not in the right frame of mind to appear before the court, unquote. The communique stated that the Attorney General believes that it is not in the best interest of the victim and the prosecution to present her before the court at this point in time. The AG stressed that it is mindful of the provisions under the prosecutor's code, one of which is that the best interest of the victim is to be considered in cases of this nature in deciding whether to prosecute a case or not. The statement also noted that other witnesses in this case who are mostly family members of Irefe are also very unwilling to testify. The AG's department, in spite of the challenges, said it still believes in the case and reserves the right to commence the prosecution once the victim and witnesses are ready. We we'll have to turn attention to some education stories. Well, authorities of the St. John's Grammar Senior High School have justified the enforcement of the school's directive against students perming their hair on campus. As you know, three students, as a result of uh, their inability to sit for their Christian religious studies paper in the ongoing West African Senior uh, school certificate examination have had uh, a lot more support from the public and the school's headmaster however says it is untrue the three were prevented from writing the papers 
The headmaster, Emmanuel Ofue Fiamavle, narrates six students were asked to stand aside during routine inspection for wearing unprescribed hairstyles, including perming their hair and wearing artificial eyelashes. The supervisor who ordered the action later discovered three of the students had disappeared. These three, he continues, are perpetual offenders who missed the exams because they left school to report the incident to a local radio station. They were not asked to... Uh, they were not prevented from writing. And it was not the whole examination. It was only one paper. And that is the CRS. They have been allowed to write in spite of their uh, defiance to the caution to go and dress well. They were allowed to write all these papers. So they... they, they, they and um, as to the issue of the head has lost his head, I will not comment about it. Whoever thinks the head has lost his head, he should keep it. Um, let his conscience judge him. Just, just for a bit of clarity, at what point did the students sneak up? He is not aware himself. But for all, he, he knows he has asked them to enter. So at the point of taking the attendance, that is where he realized that these students were not there. What steps did the supervisor or the school take to try and get the students back before this whole issue went into the media announcement? As I told you, I only heard of it at 1 o'clock and um, we are still collecting the report. According to Mr. Fiamafle, the other three sat through the paper in spite of the offences. When asked if permed hair was against the rule of education in Ghana, he responded, it's the school regulations students must abide by. Keeping hair is part of dress code. Just to look decent. And it is in their brochure. When they report or are admitted, they are taken through. If anyone has any reservation to that, you have every right to raise it and you will be permitted to keep it on. You don't accept the code of dressing and along the line, then you decide to do what you want to do. And this you are breaching the rules and regulations. Okay. So uh, in order not to allow others to probably also do what they want, we have to keep you informed. Meanwhile, action has been taken to re-register those students to write the paper at a later date. Kemini Nyamani Yamana for Joy News. And following this, there have been some reactions. Yeah, child-focused NGO, Child Rights International, is pushing for the prosecution of the headmaster of St. John's Grammar Senior High School, Emmanuel Ofoi Fiamahula, for preventing the three final-year students from writing the WASI. Well, that decision has been criticized also by other groups who are seeking punishment for the headmaster. <laughs> and speaking on Super Morning Show, Joy FM, executive director of the Child Rights International, Brian Pierre, agrees the headmaster has to be dealt with in the court of law. The conduct that they put out there, I think that the, the necessary uh, and the corresponding uh, 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 issues, they were dealt with by the school. That's why when they went to the club, they were sanctioned, they were demonized uh, and all that. But in this particular case, you cannot say that the children are subjected to the rules and regulations that govern the school. Because one, the examination that they are writing is a standard examination. It has nothing to do with St. John's. It has everything to do with WAEC. So they need to, whatever they will do, must pertain to the rules and regulations that will be put out by WAEC. So far as examination purposes are concerned. So they cannot extend the rules of the school to to the children. Mm. They, no matter no matter no matter by how bad they are, once they are taking examination and the law provides that whatever we will do, the best interest of the child they need to be protected. I think that that should be their governing principle in relation to dealing with this case. Because okay. if you even hear the headmaster in relation to uh, some the, the other people who had opportunity to write. We still stay with matters of education and stakeholders in the public tertiary education have proposed the cost-sharing approach in the payment of utilities by students. Government 
tertiary institutions, students and staff under the arrangement are to jointly bear the cost of electricity and water bills. Heads of the public tertiary institutions and teacher associations led by the Education Ministry reached the consensus at a meeting at the University of Professional Studies Accra in March. The Minister of Education, Professor Opuku Ajiman, said between November 2011 and February 2013, the government expended over 25 million on 13 public tertiary institutions as payment for electricity bills alone. She further added that between August 2013 and January 2014, almost 7 million Ghana cities was spent on 19 public tertiary institutions alone, stressing that the amount represented a fraction of the full cost of utilities in the public educational institutions. Stakeholders who participated in the discussion of strategies for sustainable consumption of utilities in tertiary institutions observed the use of different electrical appliances by students and the manner in which they are used especially greatly contribute to wastage. As such, government can no longer bear sole responsibility for the payment of utilities. They recommended a metering system should be installed to differentiate the various users. The heads of universities also intend to pursue alternative sources of electricity and water such as harvesting rain, wells, biogas and solar energy. They are also calling for regulations on the use of utilities to be developed and users compelled to comply. The crunch meeting was in response to the worsening energy crisis coupled with wastage of electricity and water usage in public tertiary institutions. Meanwhile, some tertiary students have vowed to resist the cost-sharing policy being proposed by government. The policy, when finally rolled out, will compel tertiary students in traditional halls of residence to pay for the utilities they consume. Here's our colleague Latif Idris with this report. Some students of University of Ghana who spoke to Joe News said the policy would only add to the financial burdens they are dealing with. I think what it's going to do is that it's going to put more pressure on students financially as well as psychologically. And if you take an institution like, as we have it, an educational one like this, what you'd want to do as a government or as a management is to make sure that your students are psychologically sound, they have everything that they need to be able to study effectively. And if uh, as a government you are going to compromise this by uh, putting this extra financial and psychological burden on students, I think uh, in the long run students are going to be at a great disadvantage. I, I believe that all other student activists and uh, members of the university community would also resist it. I, b I believe majority of the student populace wouldn't would love to know that their school fees are going to be increased or their hostel fees are going to be increased drastically. But this will be a drastic increment. Well, I believe we can find a very civilized way of going about it. Petitioning, perhaps. The students contend the best direction for government to go is to subsidize cost of education, which is consistently increasing. It's not really something I really support because government should at least inter intercede on behalf of the students because it's not every student you see on campus here are even able to pay their fees. Some are even struggling to pay. So if they introduce this utility bill, I don't think it's very favorable. Well, actually, it will bring many burdens upon the students because some of us will not afford all of them. So that is why we purchased for the traditional house. So if you are going to bring all these burdens on us, getting the hostels and a whole lot of staff on campus will become very difficult for the students and many people will not even be able to attend for the next semester because they know they will not be able to afford because actually we are paying for about a thousand cities for our academic tuition and those staff fees and we are paying almost 600 Ghana cities for most of making these thousands of hundred Ghana cities for just a year. So if you are going to bring all those burdens, it will be rating more than 2,500 a year and make the burden so much for students and parents to pay. So I think it's not a nice idea. Though students are unwilling to embark on this cost-sharing mission with government, some of them are conveniently paying generator usage costs imposed on them by their institutions.
I'm sure we haven't heard the last of this. So we'll get you a lot more reactions to this, especially from the student body. Yeah. So. Well, why am I feeling right now that students can talk all they want? Sadly, mm. we're going to go through with this. No, so but, just get used to it. But my thing is, you see, they have a policy of in, out, out. When mm -hmm. you're out, when you're in a hostel, you just can download everything on your computer and so put on the computer the whole day or iron all the time you want. Mm. Why is it that when you're on campus you think that you can just use whatever um, amenities or facilities there are as far as energy is concerned and feel you don't have to pay? At least you need to. And even if you travel outside, everybody wants to travel outside, I believe. Yeah, you? but I think and, the, and if the, you happen to have a scholarship, you still need to pay your utility bills. The you? gap, the communication back, the gap, I think, is when we want to do these things we have to prepare people we have to start the conversation early you know not when so it we needs are. to be very much participatory exactly see i, I think that's what was missing I agree with but you. that's it for the am news <laughs> it's brought to us by coca-cola open happiness we will come back and tell you what is trending in the newspapers today